Hello, ladies and gents. Welcome to the new episode of Youth Fires. Pastor Jesse J back again here today, and we have another special, special, special guest. Um, I met this person. What is now three years ago? This is how long we've been in this panini situation, and. <laughs> It's Shade. She's an amazing person. She has an amazing smile. When you see her, it's just infectious. Shade, how are you? I am good, Jesse. How are you? I'm awesome. I'm awesome. Thank you so much for being here today and, and joining us to speak about two amazing topics. You know, we're going to speak about youth leadership and we're going to speak about the struggles young believers have in today's world because you yourself you are a youth leader you have um, an amazing organization under your church sorts called stripped uh, and i like the the little caption the title you guys have uncensored raw and real and you know mm -hmm. i believe that is something that that youths they 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 struggle to show and they struggle to open themselves to a lot of stuff in today's world so that is so important so should they we're going to get into youth leadership Firstly, I want to ask, you know, how, how did you come into this position? Is this something that was thrusted upon you or, or did you, you know, rise to the occasion? <laughs> Serving at my church, um, my pastors were basically like, yeah, you need to, like, you need to do this <laughs> sort of thing. Like, um, the vision is that, you know, you're going to lead the youth and, and do this um a youth event and so I mean I kind of felt it anyway I've, I've been like leading bef like here and there like in previous my previous church and I was doing the Sunday school and I love like youth anyway I like lo I love young people so it just made sense um and so yeah like um and it called me to kind of um come out of my shell and just kind of do what I felt that I needed to do anyway, um, that boldness that was kind of inside of me to kind of come out. And I'm still like getting there. I'm still, you know, coming out of my shell. I preached at Stripped once and it was like the first time. And, and you know, even though God's like given me some words, I've like kind of just kept it to myself sort of thing. And I think now he's saying like, open your mouth, like speak. So there's young people have things to say, you know, like, um, and it's amazing sometimes I hear their testimonies, like of people that are like 18, 19 that God is using. So, you know, there's not an age that you just come into God, like from a young age, even from like six years old, there's some children that, you know, they're having dreams and, and visions and things. So I think it's important to focus on these, um, see what God is saying to them. Yeah, that that's so true. So true. And, and then, so that leads me to my next question is, as as a leader can a leader can you be born into leadership or is it something that is learned is it through nature or is it nature or is it a combination i mean that's a good question i do feel like sometimes when people are born into leadership and just given the title sometimes you can tell like if it's not passion there's not a passion there or um I don't know. I feel like it's a mixture of both. I think it's 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 nature and nurture. I think there are some people that are born leaders. They might not necessarily be born into leadership, but they're just natural. Like they have the leadership qualities, and I think mm -hmm. those kind of people, it should be like identified and nurtured. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be a bit all over the place, you know. But if it's like nurtured and in the right confines, I think it make can make for a really like great leader. So that's where being in an environment of the body of Christ is so important because then yeah. now you grow in good soil. It's so important yeah. to grow in good soil. And in Hebrews uh, 13, 7, it says, remember, and it speaks about remember leaders and imitate mm. them, imitate their faith, imitate their strength. And that is so important that you know, for Shade and myself and, and the cover we are under, because the importance of understanding cover, that we have to follow our leaders, follow their yeah. example, 
because there's a reason we're under them. And we mm-hmm. can't think of, oh, well, I have a leadership position, so I do things on my own. Mm-hmm. Just as we follow them, they are following the example of, of Jesus and, and, and what yeah. God is saying. And that's so important, right? Yeah. I do feel like a, a, a good leader must first learn how to be a good servant and a good mm-hmm. follower because it's then like you kind of know what to expect from people that are, I guess, under you, but also you'd know how to be a good leader and how to identify good leaders as well, how to lead others into being leaders than themselves. Yeah. And and should you talk to me a little about uh, a next thing that happens to leaders? And I believe it, it, it helps leaders to grow and to mature and it's going through trials and tests because you can't mm-hmm. be... And, and you can't just be a leader. I, and not just leaders, you know, uh, everyone. We must go mm-hmm. through trials and tests in, in this walk yeah. to strengthen us. Well, how, how important yeah. is that? Um, Very, because I feel like if you're not tested, then you don't know what you can withstand. You don't know how to relate to others that are going through... Um, tests i mean the bible talks about you know like in this world you will have trials you will have tests even jesus went through trials and tests and it's like he was strengthened after it if we if we don't go through trials and tests then uh, it's a part of life i I think we'll, Mm -hmm. we'll go through life you know with a very um inaccurate view like a a, a small-minded view of of how things are and not being able to relate to others and as a leader you need to be able to relate to all different types of people people in the world people in the church people people in and out of the church yeah Yeah, and 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 then now that you're in a form of spotlight Mm -hmm. or in a sport a form of a leadership position um, something happens where the enemy will want to attack and instill that, you know, spirit of pride, right? Pride will mm-hmm. want to come in. So then now let's talk about humility and the importance of humility because I know in Philippians, you know, too, it speaks about um, not having that selfish ambition or, or vain, you know, conceit. So how important yeah. is it to, to be humble? so important i don't think it can be stressed enough how important it is because i think they they say like pride comes before fall like Mm -hmm. you don't want to be so proud and think like you're so untouchable because then i feel like when things happen that you might not be ready for it can be Mm -hmm. quite devastating and I, i guess when you're humble people are more likely to kind of lean towards you and want to help you and see your heart like it's it you always want to have that openness so that you can appreciate like the god and the good in others and sometimes when you're prideful it's like you might turn your nose up at different situations and people because you think oh like i'm better than this or whatever whatever the the pride may look like is is so important to kind of always check yourself check your heart okay like is this you know Mm -hmm. this pride showing up um because humility i feel like people with a humble heart are more they make better leaders because they're more likely to serve others like jesus was serving even all throughout his leadership so and showing it takes a level of humility to serve um but also to be a good leader i think that's why leadership is so important that's why you guys who are who are watching who are tuning in uh to this to this episode is that you have to understand it it, it it's it's a all-encompassing role it's a role that it, it takes many different characteristics to be a leader but you have that in you you have that in you you know the God formed and fashioned you before you were in your mother's womb. So he knew you were raised up and called to be a leader in this time. In this time, we need a new generation to rise up. A 
already, right? Yeah. And and I was just thinking back to uh, somebody who I've interviewed a few times now, and um, that's Double Grace, and she's like, she's she was when she started, she started off 18, 19 years old, you know, preaching and prophesying, and but you could see that it it, it was her time, and so God is mm-hmm. using people from that time and, and, and even as Shade was saying people five and six years old and, and, and God is speaking through them. So it, it, it doesn't matter your age, it doesn't matter your 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 financial status, God is using us now. And that's why we're leading into this next part. Speaking about the struggles for young believers. Shade I, I mean uh, being in a position you're in and, 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 and hearing these testimonies, you know, what, what, what do you believe is, uh, uh, because it doesn't matter if you're in England, Trinidad, Africa, wherever you are, we all have common struggles. What, what, what do you believe is uh, now is a common struggle for, for young Christians in, in this faith? Um, I think... The two that come to mind are not realizing how exciting the things of God are. Maybe thinking that it's boring in comparison to the world. That's one thing I um, have seen from some of the young people in my church anyway. Mm -hmm. Some of the ones I speak to. And another thing is that seems to be a common struggle like everywhere is lust. Mm -hmm. Like learning how to handle lust. Yes. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, right. pride of life. <laughs> yeah, so um, those two I definitely say are like the common struggles I've seen. I mean, I was reading something the other day and in a book by Kenneth Hagen, and mm-hmm. he was talking about how we'll, so long as we're in this flesh, we're always going to struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's about dying to the flesh, killing the flesh. <laughs> dying to the flesh but also sometimes it's like okay with temptation right we feel it or I find when I've spoken to quite a few people it's like you feel it and you're like oh no Mm -hmm. I'm feeling temptation I have to give in (laughs) it's like it's not really a struggle it's not really a struggle it's uh like are you really struggling Mm -hmm. or do you just give in like straight Mm -hmm. away and, and that's a so question good. I kind of have to ask myself, even when I feel like if, when I'm like being tempted, I'm like, okay, just because I'm feeling it doesn't mean I'm a horrible person. It's what you do. Yeah. It's what you do with that. And I think it's about teaching people how to, to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. You know, yeah. it's, it, it, it could, and, and we, we, we don't want to sound that we are, uh, putting it in so simple terms that's so easy oh resist the devil and you flip boom and it's yeah. gone it's not that at all but mm. you know and, and I, I think of the example of, of Jesus and, and, and when, the authority that he had and understanding the authority that he had and we yeah. need to understand we have that authority you know when Jesus yeah. went and he was in the boat and then he, he stopped off in the town and you know they had the, the guy with the legion in him and, you know, he just said, you know, come out to this man. <laughs> and it was mm-hmm. so simple as that. Jesus, he w- walked with that authority, you know. Yeah. And, and the legion was like, oh, okay, okay, we'll come out, but, but send us somewhere, send us somewhere else, yeah. you know. That, that the demons were scared of him. And the demons would be scared of us too. And we, we have to understand that. And, and, and everything, whether it's a small thing of you guys who are watching, whatever age you are, you, you have to write an exam and you have to pass this exam and you're like, oh my God, God help me and this. And, and I'm speaking from experience of over the years of, of studying, of not studying and then have an exam coming up. And yeah. then you're praying to God in heaven and all the angels and the universe that you could pass this exam. <laughs> yeah. with, with trying to pull off of of the, the the classes that you did not listen to any lecturer with <laughs> and god is good right god is good mm-hmm. <laughs> philippians 4 13 i can do all things through christ who strengthens me <laughs> and i i, I want to end on on this scripture and, and speaking in the as well of the importance of of being spirit-led and understanding this walk with christ is spirit-led 
and to not let the flesh overcome not let our position of being a youth and and because we are young then we are missing out on the world we're missing mm. out on the pleasures of this world when you know that's totally the opposite that's what the enemy wants you to believe so it's so yeah. important the importance of fellowship in church getting into the yeah. word of god getting into worship because that's where god wants to speak to us that's where god wants to use us and it says in first timothy 4 12 and i, I want to read it i said let no one despise you uh, your youth but be an example to the believers in word spoke about word and conduct how you behave in love in spirit in faith and in purity so it's so important that these little characteristics these little gifts here these little uh, ways that we must be so strong in christ that we hold these things dear to us that let no one yeah. let no one put you off course uh for for how young you are or for and, and not just not just young in age, but a young believer. You could be in your forties, mm. your fifties, and you just received Christ. It doesn't matter, right? It's so important to to keep uh, God's word so close to us. Today, as we close today, I would love if you could uh, pray for all of those watching and those who will watch um, to to really touch them and to and to, to impart, you know, just just what God is, is saying to you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this platform, this channel, Lord, for everybody who is watching, Lord, for Jesse um, leading this, for, for just this, this segment about leadership and, and the leaders that you have equipped in your body um, and for the young leaders coming up, Lord, for, throughout what they face in this life, Lord, I just pray that you would strengthen them, oh God, that you would show them the, the power and the authority that you have given them to overcome every obstacle that they would ever face in this life, every trial and tribulation, oh God, you, you said that you have overcome the world, you know every struggle that n known to man, every everything that we would ever face, Lord Jesus, so I thank you that we can have that comfort knowing that um, there's nothing that we could ever face that you have not overcome, that you have not equipped us to handle. Oh God, you said in your word that you have given us the ability to trample on snakes and scorpions, Lord Jesus. So anything that seems too big, oh God, that, there's no, there's nothing that is too big or too small. There's nothing that is impossible for you. And even as we've looked at um, leadership and just cons consistency, Lord, I just pray that your people, your youth will be equipped to be consistent in their walk, Lord, to overcome temptation, to overcome, oh God, every limitation, to overcome obstacles, Lord Jesus, even naysayers, Lord, I pray that you would give them the ability to, to be humble, Lord Jesus, and to serve, to identify the flaws and mistakes in them that would cause them to crop up later would cause them to stumble later in life to to evaluate themselves to have the ability to look into their hearts lord jesus to take criticism from their leaders without seeing it as a, offensive lord jesus your word says that um let us not grow weary of doing good yes. so lord i just pray for your youth oh lord jesus that they will be strengthened um to 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 walk this race to the end, Lord Jesus, for those young in the faith, for those young in, in, in age. Lord, I just pray for each and every one, oh God, that they will be equipped and encouraged by this series and by your word um, and by the, the body around them, but by the fellowship that they have around them. In your mighty name, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Wow. That was awesome. That was awesome. Shade, thank you so much for your time today. We we really, really had an awesome time today, didn't we? <laughs> yes. Thank you for having me so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank I really, you. really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, hopefully the first of many. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, hopefully next time we'll be a person. I want to come back to the UK, man. Yes. Yes, you have to come. Jeez, jeez, man. I just, I just, I love it up there. Uh, so I'll be back soon. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching this episode of Unifiers. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. 
Thank you, Shadi, for being on. God bless.